All right, folks, in this final tutorial in this series on trap code form, we're going to combine a series of techniques and tools we've already looked at in order to create this fictional user interface. We're also going to master the art of using multiple forms. As a matter of fact, all of these elements, other than you know the text and the styling stuff on the edges and whatnot, all of these main components will be created using a single instance of form on just one layer. Now I'm going to assume that you've been through the other tutorials in this series, so I'll go pretty quick, except through the multiple form stuff. Now we've got lots of fun stuff to make, so let's get to it. Now just as an overview of the project, the first three forms will be used to make the grid in the background. The second three forms will be used to make this mountain with the uh, trackers and the locators here. And then the final two forms will be used to create the uh, data analysis mock-up stuff right here. Now, we're going to be starting from scratch, so I'm going to go to a form UI or just a solid uh, that has form applied to it. And you can just go ahead and reset this, start from scratch, and go ahead and open up the designer. We'll be spending most of our time there in this tutorial. And again, I'm going to pause the playback here. We'll be coming back to this in a second, but I pause it to make it uh, easier to edit this tutorial. And we'll start here in the base form, click the type. We'll come over here to size, change it to XYZ individual, change the X uh, value here to 1920 by 1080 and size Y. Size Z, you don't need to worry about because we're going to take particles in Z down to one. So it's just a, basically a 2D grid here. Particles in X, we're going to take to 40 and particles in Y, we're going to take to 23. Now we're going to go over here to particle type. And we're going to change the type to square. These are going to be like the junctions of all the grids, the little squares where the lines intersect. We'll scroll down a little bit and change the blend mode to add. Then we'll go over to the opacity block and drop this down to a mere 22. And then we'll go over here to the color and click on the color swatch. And I'm going to change the uh, HSB values. I'm just going to go click on these sliders here, HSB. Uh, your color thing might look different based on your operating system, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here 180 and 88 and 57. So this is the kind of like darker teal shade that I'm looking for for this. Now it's kind of hard to see, it's a small element, but basically we've got our grid set up the way that we want it, 1920 by 1080, it's a perfect grid. And so we want our lines now that intersect these squares to be kind of based on a lot of these same parameters. We want it to be the same color and the same uh, part number of particles and, and that type of thing. So what I'm gonna do, instead of making a new form, I'm gonna go to this fly out here, this drop down, and I'm gonna uh, click on duplicate form. So basically again, we have two of the same forms here. Now I could go over here to the type and change the base form type of form two to box strings. Okay, so now we're getting a little closer here. I'm going to go over here to particle type. And uh, for whatever reason, sphere, and I think it's because of the feathered edge, sphere can get smaller than square can. And we want these little tiny fine lines here. So that's why we're doing that. Matter of fact, I'll come over here to the size rotation block, take size from two to one, take those little, little hairline grids here. And we want opacity and color to be inherited from the main one. And that's basically what happened because we duplicated the form. But just so I can kind of do good housekeeping and look at this at a glance and know that this is actually inheriting the same opacity and color from the master form, I'm going to go ahead and trash the opacity and the color blocks because, again, it's just using the same opacity and color uh, from the master. And if I ever want to change anything or come back here and add its own color opacity, these little pluses will indicate a very quick shorthand that these uh, opacity and color are coming from the master. Now, we have the horizontal grid lines. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. Uh, we're going to go to form two. Fly out here, choose duplicate form, and we want to make these the vertical lines. So I click on the type, change the uh, size Y to invert those. So it's basically 1080 in X and 1920 in Y. Let's also change particles in Y to 40. And so now we have the lines that we need. We just need to rotate them. Now you think you might think we need to go to size rotation, but this actually refers to the rotation of the particle themselves. We actually want to rotate the entire base form, which happens here in this type block in the base form here. So I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees, and now we have our vertical lines, thus completing our grid. 
Now, the next three forms refer to the uh, kind of virtual mountains with the scanners on them. So this is going to be completely different than the other three forms. So we're not going to duplicate anything. We're going to start from scratch by clicking the plus icon. Now I'm going to click on the base form type block here, and I'm going to change size to XYZ individual. I'm going to change the size X to 970, the size Y to 1080, particles in X to 114, and particles in Y to 180. And we are actually going to still leave three particles in Z, so these uh, layers uh, kind of stack on top of each other, these form grids. And I'm also going to change the relative position by changing the XYZ coordinates here from uh, the defaults to 300, negative 10, and 90. Bring that a little, push that a little bit far back in Z space. For particle type, all we need to do here is scroll down and change the blend mode to add. And then what we want to do here is for the color, we want to basically use the same color as the master form uses, but a little bit brighter. So I can click on that color swatch, right click on that block and choose copy block values. Then I could just scroll down to the form that I was working on, form four, right click on this block and choose paste block values. Now I could come over here to the, uh, the blocks, the controls area here, click on this color swatch and then brighten it up just a tad there and go ahead and close this window. Now let's add a fractal field here to make this look like mountains. I'm going to go over to the fractal field, click the plus icon and we want to displace this. So I'm going to click on displace. That gives us a generic value of 150 for the X displace, but that's actually perfect for us. Now, if I play this, we'll see that this is kind of like your basic form thing. It's moving around that fractal is displacing by default. That's because the flow evolution value is set to default value of 50. So it moves. So I'm gonna take this down to zero. And now when I play this, it doesn't move at all. It's just static. And since mountains don't get all wavy, usually uh, that works for us here. Now the secret trick here, and we talked about this before when we looked at fractal displacement, but the trick is we want to change the contrast of the fractal displacement by adjusting the gamma. And we're actually going to take this down to zero, and that gives us this kind of like distinct, you know, digital mountainy texture. Now we want to shrink this considerably and kind of fade out on the edges so it doesn't feel quite so boxy. So I'm going to go to fractal field on this block, scroll up here, and I'm going to add some uh, curves here to a few values. So I've changed fractal strength over radial. So that way the fractal strength changes from the center to the outside edges. So I'm gonna go to the presets and choose this one where it's the max on the left and it reduces on the right. I could also go over here to the pen tool and adjust this further. I might wanna take this little one on the right here up a little bit. And you see the result that that has. So this kind of makes it kind of spread out a little bit. That might not be what we want, but we'll use a couple other curves to reduce this along the edges. Let's actually go over to size rotation and we'll do size over X. So that's the size from left to right. And we'll go ahead and from the presets, we'll choose this kind of bell curve. So it's small on the left and small on the right. And we could actually shrink this down even more again by going to the pen tool and by bringing these values in. So you really have a lot of ability to customize this as much as you want. It looks pretty good. And now we need to worry about the Y. So let's go over to opacity and change the opacity over Y. And we'll do the same thing. It's kind of like bell curve here. And we'll go to the pen tool and we'll bring this in a little bit to kind of just make this like a little section of not like an almost like a mountainy island that uh, we're scanning here. So that completes our mountainy island, and now we need to add kind of like locators where we've seen the villain's hideouts be. So we're going to go ahead and start from scratch here by clicking the plus icon. So we have a fresh new form, and I'll go ahead and click on the type, and we'll change the uh, size to XYZ individual. And I'm going to go ahead and change the size to 240 and 520 and the Y. And in the number of particles, we're just gonna have a few here. So I'm gonna do three in X, three in Y, and just one in Z. Now it's really hard to see here. They're very tiny, but just hang with me. We'll see this stuff uh, working in just a second. I'm also gonna change the relative position here, the XYZ values. I'm gonna change this to 266, 116 in the Y, and negative 117 in the, the Z axis. So it's a little bit forward and in front of the mountains. 
Now, again, these are gonna be little red spheres here. Let's go, over, go ahead to particle type, and we don't want any feather here, so we're gonna take this down to zero. We'll go over to size rotation, take up the size from two to 18, so now we can see those a little bit more clearly. Let's go over to uh, size random, increase this all the way to 100, and let's go over to opacity, and increase opacity random quite a bit, maybe to about uh, 70 or so. Now let's make these red so they stand out, and so it looks more serious. These hideaways are not playing around. And there we go, nice little red color there. That's where the bad guys are found, but a little bit too uniform, so let's go ahead and go to disperse, click the little plus icon, get its own disperse value, click on disperse particles, and as we go back to the controls area, the disperse value is set to 100, and we can crank this up a bit to maybe like 180 or so. And now it looks like, okay, here's where we have intel on the bad guys hideouts here. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to add tracking locators on top of these, and we're gonna have these move from location to location. So it kind of looks like, okay, the bad guys are here, now they're here, now they're here, now we've getting some activity over here or whatever. So we wanna use this and the disperse value and everything as the basis of where those tracking markers are going to go. So again, let's go to the flyout from form five, choose duplicate form. So now we're on form six here. Basically just again, duplicated those same little dots. And let's fiddle with this here. Let's go to particle type. And I'm gonna change this to sprite colorize. And let's choose a sprite here by clicking the choose sprite button. The sprite that I'm looking for is in the 2D shapes area. And if I scroll down here, it's called locator one. This one here, go ahead and click okay. And now you can see these little locators on top of our spherical little hideout things. So now I'm gonna scroll down on, in the particle type block, change the blend mode to add. I'm gonna to go to size rotation. I'm gonna increase the size to 40. And now we can see a little bit better with these locators here, what's going on. To make these stand out even more, let's go to the color swatch, click this, and let's go ahead and I'm gonna change this to maybe like an orangey color here. There we go. And now we can tell our bad guy hideouts from our tracking locators where we're finding them. And right now, because we duplicated everything, we're having locators at all the places where there were bad guy hideouts. And that's not great. We want this to kind of like move over time and adjust and fluctuate in our, in our opacity. So what I'm gonna do is go to the fractal field, click on the plus icon here, click effect opacity. So we're gonna have the fractal field affect the opacity of the tracking markers. And I'm going to take flow evolution down just a little bit to 40. Of course, you can adjust all these parameters to taste. But now when I play this back, you can see that, um, well, it's kind of slowing my machine down a little bit. But over time, we start having these uh, tracking locators kind of like fade in, fade out. Oh, no, we lost them. They were at this location and now they're gone, that type of thing. So, all right, we have two sections done, the grid and the mountain with the tracking locators and the uh, pinpoint uh, data centers here. And now the final thing, we're gonna have a grid here, which indicates kind of like our uh, data analysis as it's kind of like processing where this information is coming in and, and all that kind of stuff. Basically just a bunch of little squares kind of popping in and out. And we're gonna start from scratch with that. So I'm gonna click plus on the uh, forms area to make a new fresh form. I'm gonna click on this first base form block. We'll change X, Y, Z to individual in the size area. We'll change size here, size X to 225 and then 410 in the Y. We just want these to be 2D particles. So I'm gonna take the particles in Z down to one. We'll take the particles in X to seven, just seven and in Y just 13. We'll adjust the relative position of that because right now it's right here in the center. And so we'll adjust the relative position to uh, negative 567, 140 in the Y and zero in Z. So now we have a little kind of like a data analysis area over here on the left-hand side of the interface and they don't kind of overlap at all. Now I'm gonna change the particle type to square, scroll down, change the blend mode to add. I'm gonna click on size rotation to increase the size of these just a little bit to six. There we go, now we're getting a nice little square grid here. Let's increase size random to 100. And okay, this is starting to look techy. I'm, I'm feeling this. Let's go to over to opacity. Take down opacity to about 40 and increase opacity random to about 70. 
And uh, again, looking very nice and techy. The color we kind of want to be like the mountain color. So what we can do is come over here to form four, right click, copy block values, click down here on form seven, right click, paste block values. And there we go. Now, again, kind of like these tracking markers, we want it to look like this is processing and that these squares are kind of like coming in and out as they're uh, analyzing their data. So again, we're gonna add some fractal field here. Click this plus icon, affect opacity again, and we're going to move our mouse away and come back, change affect opacity to 80. And then we're gonna go down and uh, kind of like what we did with the mountains, we're gonna take the gamma down to zero here and we'll take F scale down to 19. This is just changing the contrast of the fractal noise pattern used to generate the map that affects the opacity here. So it just it's a subtle change, but it gives us just a little bit more randomness. Now, our final piece of the puzzle here is that we want to create little outlines around some of these as well. So again, we want it to be based on this same grid. So we're gonna to go to form seven and then fly out here and again, choose duplicate form. Now I'm gonna click on particle type and I'm going to change this to a Sprite Colorize again. And I'm gonna choose the Sprite. And this time I'm going to scroll down and I'm gonna choose Square Outline and click OK. So it's a square, but it's an outline of a square. By default, we don't see anything. We'll see it in just a second. Scroll down here in the control section, make sure the blend mode's set to add. Then I'm gonna to go to size rotation and make this bigger. I'm gonna change the size to 18. And now we start to see the outline of these blocks outside of the dots here. Let's go over to opacity and let's give it a little bit more opacity to 50 and opacity random, a little bit more randomness up to 100. And let's go to color, change the color so it's not the same type thing. So I'm gonna click on the color swatch and I'm just gonna go full red. I'm gonna go with red all the way over here, just full red. And so now we have these cool squares outside of our initial squares and it looks pretty cool, except I wanted to kind of give it a different pattern of uh, analysis here. And so I'm gonna go to the fractal field section and uh, I'm gonna take op effect opacity up to, well, let's just take it to 100 there. And then I'm gonna scroll down, adjust gamma to 1.5, and I'm going to go to uh, F scale and take that down just a little bit to 15. And that just changes uh, our squares and kind of randomizes the pattern a little bit more. So it looks like there's kind of like two sets of data kind of being verified and cross-checked. Now, because the display is kind of uh, shrunk down the designer and these lines are really tiny, we're getting some of them missing a little bit and it looks like they're kind of just like not complete circles. But once I click apply here at the bottom right hand corner of the designer and go back into the main UI of After Effects, we'll see that those squares are just fine here. That's pretty much it. This is done again with one layer of form, one instance of trap code form and eight forms being used at once, which is really cool because now you can control it on just one layer if you wanted to. Now for just some extra decoration, I added some text. I had an adjustment layer here that fiddled with the colors. I added this mask, uh, the solid layer with red and then feathered out these little sections to make it look like there's kind of like some screen glare. I added a vignette to kind of darken the edges. And then I also added a hollow matrix adjustment layer, hollow matrix being a great effect from the uh, universe collection, which allows me to create these kind of like cool user interface looking things. So there you have it. It's complete and done and it looks amazing. It didn't take that long. And we were able to create some really rich designs with just one single instance of form using multiple forms. So folks, that concludes not only this tutorial, but also this entire series on using trap code form. On behalf of Red Giant, thank you for going on this journey with us through this singular and remarkable piece of software. I hope you've enjoyed watching it even just half as much as I've enjoyed making it. Again, I'm Chad Perkins. Take care of yourselves. And one last time, a huge shout out to Pond5 for the delightful music I've used in these tutorials. <laughs>